Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane and I'm joined tonight with Eileen for our Power of 8 at 8. How are you doing tonight, Eileen? I'm doing great. How are you, Shane? How's everybody out there? Everybody out there in YouTube land. <laughs> Let me see. I'm trying to pull you guys up so I can see your comments. But, um, and I'm really bad at reading comments and talking at the same time. <laughs> So I probably shouldn't even try, right? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I think this is running better as... I forgot my phone for coffee. Oh, you said you forgot your coffee? We're experimenting tonight. <laughs> I got my water. Oh. Okay. I got my water. We're experimenting tonight, right, with Zoom? Yeah, we're trying to zoom out and seeing if that's uh, any smoother. Not that it's been a big any issue. Any clearer? But, yeah, and any clearer. I'm always fuzzy. Every time I go live, I always, when I play it back, it looks fuzzy. I look fuzzy. Does it, uh, does it get clear at times or is it just always fuzzy? For me, playback on my devices, I always look a little bit fuzzy, but you look pretty clear. Actually, you look very clear. I always thought it was my Wi-Fi, maybe my camera, maybe my computer's not, you know, as modern. Yeah, I thought it was I'm uh, looking probably pretty connection. Clear. Yeah. We're, we're clear and we're side by side like the Brady Bunch, but just two of us. So I can look this way. The Brady hey, yeah, just two. <laughs> Sherry, Ronnie, Debbie Hazelton, Isaiah. Oh, I get to see everybody. Isn't this awesome? It is cool. It's really clear. Do you guys think I look clearer than normal? Because I'm not fuzzy in real life. That's just my Wi Fi <laughs> on my old computer on Hangouts making me fuzzy. <laughs> and Debbie. Debbie and uh, Debbie Hazelton. There's two Debbies in the room. Debbie Jessup. Awesome. Ellie. I feel like Scott Harrison now. I should have this big booming microphone calling out everybody's names. Has anybody watched Scott Harrison Mandela over in England? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it, Scott. He's, he's got a really nice spirit about him. He's always fun and uplifting. He is, and he always, oops. Can you hear this in the background? It's a puppy food bowl. Can anybody hear that or just me? So yeah, it's... I'm going to exit stage left. Okay. Yeah. He's... Before we meditate. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So this looks like Boy, I'm looking. This is live, right? This is live. <laughs> Nothing edited and pre-recorded here. And that's, that's proof <laughs> right there. Thank you, Sherry. And right Isaiah. before we went on, I, I, I picked up all the squeaky toys. I have to do this every Saturday night because my one, um, hi, Grace, Paul, Caroline is in, um, Bella. Oh, my God. We're going to be doing this all night. Shelly. Um, my one thing is because we have a puppy, I'm always worried that when we're in the deep, you're going to hear squeaky toys bring you out of it. Oh, yeah. You can let them run free until it's meditation time. and then... Yeah, they're running free because yeah. otherwise uh, the older dog's fine. The puppy will start crying and scratching. So I just let her run free, take all the noise things away from her. So we should be good to go now. <laughs> hey, Shelly. We have a bunch of animal lovers here, so it's, uh, it's totally nope. cool. Nobody cares. And yeah. you'll hear you'll hear my grandson. Nobody cares. In the background, occasionally, and my my kids entertaining him, as it were. <laughs> yeah, I heard him before, and I heard your daughter. So um, we don't really have a topic to discuss this week, but we were going to do the first through third chakras because last week we did the fourth through seventh chakras in our community. 
um, clearing them, cleaning them, balancing them just for overall strength, health, uh, adjustment to the new energies and the new waves. Yeah. Have you been feeling anything lately? I've had a few really sleepy episodes. Come on. Yeah, I've had some sleepy episodes and I can see because I don't have any special lights and I don't wear makeup that I look like I have bags under my eyes today. That's probably because I had wine last night, though, not because of sleep and the waves of energy. I don't react well to alcohol. And when I do have it for a celebration or for fun with people, I can see it and I can feel it on me. Yeah, I don't I never have been into alcohol too much. I mean, I had a few episodes where, you know. I, I did go to parties and stuff when I was younger, but I mean the type of person that just kind of kept yeah, it in the my cupboard. 20s. In fact, I would usually keep it in the cupboard for a really long time because I wouldn't drink it. It would just kind of stay up there. I remember our kids asking That's us really when, good. We, when we were kids, they were like, are you guys alcoholics? <laughs> because we, <always laughs> had, we had like this bottle of tequila. Because you had so much alcohol in the, in the cupboard. But it sat up there forever. No, it was just really, it was like, a, I think some margarita mixer stuff and like the alcohol... Well, that, that stuff was in the fridge, like in the back forever. And then the, the, the tequila was up in the cabinet forever. But we didn't drink it. So it just looked like we always had it around. You know what I mean? I guess we Yeah, but it never it. goes off, does it? No. Any of that <laughs> distilled alcohol lasts forever. Yeah. Carolina says that she's been feeling uh, purging in her lower chakras since uh, the eclipse. We've got a big one coming up soon, don't we? Not an eclipse. Eclipse season's over. But we have... Um, the autumnal equinox coming up September 22nd, I believe this year. Usually it's like the 21st, 22nd. Oh, right at the uh, fall or autumn equinox day, I guess that's one of those. Um, twin <laughs> flame, divine they fire. Had, they said we had a huge wave today, guys. Yeah, I saw that. That, that must be what hit me today because... Man, I got up, I felt great, and then, I don't know, around noon or something, I was like, I think I'm going to take a nap. I don't know why I felt... I had coffee and everything, or caffeine anyway. Um, Maybe that's why I got bags under my eyes. Maybe it's not the wine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know yeah. what's, what's really neat? And, hey, um, Dead GPK. I was born uh, a week after the spring equinox, and my daughter... Her birthday, mine is March 30th. My daughter's birthday is September 30th. So hers is exactly, we have just as many days before each other's birthday as after. We're as far away from each other's birthday. We're like exactly six months apart. But what's funny is our birthdays come a week after the equinoxes. So mine comes after the spring equinox and hers comes after the autumn uh, equinox. So it's usually the 22nd or 23rd. So it usually lines up to be like a week or a week and a day ahead of our birthday, which is really strange but it just kind of worked really out. really balanced are you guys like really balanced like together you guys are just like a perfect weight where not one side's too heavy or one side's too you know that that's a lot of balance you know on the yeah. opposite sides of equinox it's not as balanced as the birthdays so let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> but, Twin Flame says that they passed out too but they're on the coffee you didn't say whether it was because of wine though Right. Or anything else. Yeah, um, I think these waves are going to just keep increasing, increasing with our scattered electric magnetic shield. I don't think the waves are ever going away, guys. I think we're just going to keep uh, adapting to them. Yeah. So you so go outside. Cool. There's there's like a thunderstorm, a, a thundercloud right above your house. <laughs> you know? I think there really is. I mean, I, I can't hear anything yet. But all the dogs are hiding, and they hide about 20 minutes before the storm hits. And when it hits, it is like really, it th those lightning, um, those lightning strikes hit the earth yeah. right around us. So that's a good time to meditate and manifest, because you, then you get that extra electrical charge behind it. Plus, we're grounded, which is a good thing to do while you know during an electrical storm. So yeah, we're doing that connection to the earth and stuff this is like the perfect timing i think you know what the it storm is. going on and it's going on here too which connects yeah, us ooh. together through the atmosphere and the earth and you know well i we think in the house else. we're safe but let me tell you guys a story about when i lived in england two girls got struck by lightning in a park which is very unusual in england more common in florida right because they had their cell phones turned on in their pocket and they had wi-fi turned on so if you're outside and a lightning storm strikes, 
turn your phone off because it literally sucks um, that electricity in through the Wi-Fi. The other person um, on that weird, that show, that Honey Boo Boo show, one of the daughters got struck sitting outside in a storm with her uh, tablet. So isn't that interesting? But I think in a house and in a car, you can have your Wi-Fi on. I don't know how it would get through the house or a car. Yeah, that is strange. But I have heard about it, you know, through just the regular landline, like the lightning has struck the phone pole and then shock someone on their landline phone in their home, you know? Yeah, I knew somebody in Colorado. The lightning hit their antenna. That's back in the days when we had TV antennas, like big metal ones sticking on the roof. Mm -hmm. And it put the electricity of the full um lightning bolt through all their appliances and knocked out everything anything that was plugged in was completely blown to smithereens you know oh, wow. stoves and microwaves and tvs anything that's wild yeah because i used to uh when i put in satellite dishes and worked for the cable company years ago you know you have to ground everything um for that very reason well, it's interesting because in England and in Europe, there's a there's a third prong in everything that you plug in, and that's a grounding prong. It's round and it's thick and it's heavy, and so the two skinny flat ones, just like ours, that you plug in for electricity, go in the wall, and then there's like a real heavy grounding one, yeah. and inside the plug is a fuse. So technically, if it ever gets overloaded, the fuse goes and turns it off. Yeah, mm. that's extremely safe. That's like super safe electricity, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, I think, are you talking about the GFI ones that have the little button on them that pop? Nope, that's separate. They've got oh, the okay. GFI as well. But you know the bit that plugs in the wall? Yeah. It always has three prongs, and yeah. one of those is a grounding prong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technically, the two. The, technically, the wide hole and the round hole go to the same place so it's like an alternative grounding so that, like some of the old lamps if they wired them backwards you'd reach up to turn them on or off and they were metal so you could touch the rim by the light bulb itself which should have been the ground but if it was wired wrong you could shock yourself but if it had that grounding wire it always had that alternative ground it can go to you this know, is interesting and stuff like because that. when I used to, I play guitar and when I played electric guitar, whenever I touched my speaker and my electric guitar at the same time, I got shocked from both of them. And not like a shock from the winter when you walk on carpet and touch someone. I got this buzzy thingy and I always wondered why I was getting shocked from two things that so there was obviously something wrong with one of them. Imagine what life would be like now if we had Tesla energy and we were sucking our electricity out of the air you know instead yeah. of through wires that's funny you said that because my brother got in trouble i went into his room to play his guitar and his amplifier and um i plugged it all in and i was while i was touching the strings i was getting shocked and i couldn't figure out why it wasn't as bad as the outlet but it was still a nice little jolt you know and then yeah come yeah. to find out he had taken the speaker out of the amplifier and put it in his car for more bass or something, I guess, and hooked it up to his stereo. So he got in big trouble for taking it out and me getting shocked, and I couldn't figure out why I was getting shocked. But I, Oh, know. my God. You could have been, like, seriously shocked. <laughs> yeah, but I shouldn't have been playing on his guitar either, I guess. There you go. Instant karma, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we need to start using this increased magnetism for our manifestations, guys. Like, pick a time every day for five minutes and just relax and visualize your manifestations and let all that energy around you, the waves that are increasing, send it out into the universe for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry to hear that Lori, her dog passed away. Sending you lots of love. Oh, no. Is yeah. that Lori um, Lothian? Mm -hmm. Her dog passed? So sorry. A couple of days I'll bet ago. I'll bet you the energy of that pooch is still around you. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, my friend Becky Lewis, Becky Lewis um, was talking about uh, f feeling the cat rubbing up against her leg after it had passed, you know. And so I know that they're still around, and or the energy of them, you know, like you're saying. They might not I, even I, know, I, you know. It's like, oh, I I'm saw, not thirsty anymore. I just saw one guy once who was um, a medium who could read your loved ones who passed on. Mm -hmm. And um, 
there was a small group of us and he was professional and he could actually describe what they were wearing and what their personality traits were like if they had an odd habit so we immediately knew who he was picking up on based on really specific things and he actually saw somebody's dog he's like okay he's standing there he's wearing this and there's a small black dog curly hair next to him and that was extremely telling for the person because um she had lost her her loved one and the dog and they were together their energy their energy was together and was readable by a medium which i thought was you know and really interesting because the people who had good readings they were not afraid of it they they were kind of comforted mm -hmm. it was very comforting to know that their loved one's energy is still there and with them at the same time it's like the energy of the past um, departed one can be where it's supposed to be and also be by you at the same time because space and time don't exist for them. Yeah, Lori's saying that she had a dream two days beforehand where her dog was telling her goodbye. So I can imagine oh. that would be comforting as oh. well to a certain extent. I mean, that's beautiful because, you know, animals are like our family. In fact, a they lot of uh, empty nesters have their animals around it. It's like their kids, you know what I mean? It's like just another part of their family and they communicate, they talk to them. And, um, I yep. used to work for a lot of people like that and they just love it. Their dogs love them too. That's why I don't understand. They say, you know, humans have, you know, souls and dogs don't. I'm like, dogs are just, they can feel love too. You can totally. All animals. Oh yeah. yeah. And I've seen monkeys like, uh, or, you know, uh, gorillas or apes or something. There was this one really sad video where the, the baby had died and you could tell the mother, uh, ape was mourning over the loss of her, her baby or whatever and keep you know dragging it around for a few days it was so sad so uh, to say um, that they don't have love and feelings and stuff i don't think is accurate from what mother whales will will swim with their dead calves for a few days as well and protect them and then they let them go yeah. and they let them you know move on into whatever the matter does but they they hold on to them for a few days and elephants do that too don't they they yeah. mourn the losses in their well if you if you believe the hindu traditions and some of the ancient Hindu traditions that all souls from earth mm -hmm. need to go through all levels of life. So when you get to the level of a dog or a cat, supposedly they're becoming individualized. Like if they were a monkey, they just might be monkey spirit with a million other monkeys. But as soon as you bring them into your home and you start talking to them, their name, looking them in the eye, making them realize, oh, my gosh, I am a separate part of a dog. And they, you know, sometimes you see them with a mirror yeah. and you can see the cat or the dog actually figuring out that they exist and that they're separate from all other life in the room. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. Yeah. That's supposed the, uh... to be evolutionary that that's, which would mean that at some point all of us were whatever we experience in the animal kingdom. We've all experienced that already. And we've moved on from that collective. That's that what collective I enjoyed. Existence. About, that's what I enjoyed about the law of one is that it talked about, how uh, there's the, uh, you know, the first, like we're in third density and the first density was like fire and earth and water and, you know, so minerals, rocks, dirt, all of those things have consciousness. But it's like what you were saying. It's more like the earth is a single consciousness. So like all of the rocks, you know, they do have indi individualized to a certain extent. But then the next level as as you go into like the second density, you've got animals and yep. plants and things like that. And they've shown uh, scientifically, they show how like one tree will sense something and the other trees around it start mm -hmm. responding to it because they're really sharing a consciousness to a certain extent, yeah. you know, they're and they like can't all figure connected. out, yeah, and they yeah. can't figure out how they're connected. They're like, how does these trees, or, I think what it was is um, the, uh, the giraffes, if they started nibbling on one tree, the other ones would start responding before it even got to that tree, like putting out some kind of something that made them not want to eat their leaves or something it was something along the lines of, of that i'm not i'm probably jacking it up but it was something along those lines where there was this invisible connection there but if yeah you imagine instant this, communication yeah but then as um animals get into the top of the second density 
which they say pets are because you've brought them into your home, like you're saying, you've allowed them to sort of become this individualized puppy or dog or cat Mm -hmm. or bird Mm -hmm. even, you know, and um, that their next incarnation, they typically come in as a human after that and move to third density. Mm -hmm. So you're actually helping them. uh, Uh, Individualize. Yeah. Yeah. And become, yeah, that's beautiful to think of it that way. I I remember that. I read all those books um, uh, quite a few, you know, like a decade or, or two ago, maybe 12 years ago. And it made sense that the animals are still communicating on that, that collective mind, but so are we. It's yeah. like we don't realize we're communicating on the collective um, because we're so individualized. We're so focused on our life, our body, our finances, our family, that we kind of tend to ignore the collective more. But it's always lurking, isn't it? It's always there in the background. And Dolores Cannon was really good at reaching the collective information. She always spoke to the collective yeah, I always enjoyed that, the way she could continue a conversation, you know, with someone around the other side of the world. And then that really gets to that whole thing with the, uh, it, it really tied in nicely with the uh, uh, Wingmaker's material, talking about how yeah. there's these layers of consciousness, you know, and we've got yep. our individual layer, but there is this one that where we experience everything. And that really makes sense of like, because when you think of like, if this is some kind of simulated reality, how do we all see the same moon and the sun? And why do we have this? unless yeah but that's part of that con we're all being fed this information at this other and maybe group level. we're maybe we're the creators of the simulation exactly somewhere yeah. inside of us we are co-simulating we're co-programming we're co-creating the matter around us in in an agreement because we just agree that blue is blue and and grass is green and the sky is blue we agree to that when you're a child, you have no idea about this stuff and they tell you what it is and you go, okay. So you continue to feed the collective programming. Exactly. And we might actually be the processors. Like you, you yes. think in a computer, if there's a yes. simulator, you got a processor, but what do we have here? Sorry about that. I got things popping up on my screen. Okay. So uh-huh. yeah. So yeah, we might be, you know, if the is some kind of simulation, we might be the area where it's all housed within it. You know what I mean? Like, we are the memory. We are the processor that's running it. And the receiver. Right. Oh, my God. Think of a toroid. Do you guys know what a, a toroid looks like? Uh, that that torus that yeah, comes like out of the body? Shape, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a complete circle where the energy comes out of you and then comes back into you. Right. That would make us the receivers, the programmers and the receivers yeah. at the same time. Totally. And we wouldn't even realize that we're doing that unless that's what the mandala effect is. The mandala effect might be the switch that says you're the sender and the receiver, you know, to kind of wake you up that you have more control in what's around you than you think, than you know. Oh, we got a new moon tomorrow. Bob is saying that's all cool. So that's like, I guess when the sun passes or the moon passes the sun, it took me a while because I go out and look, and I'm like, new moon, new moon, where is Can't it? But it. you're not going to see it dark. because it's right by the sun. Is that so, why? Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, as it, as you make your way through the month, it, it moves further and further. So it passes the sun, you know, each day, and it takes a month for it to make it all the way around and back to the sun again. And once it passes the sun, that's considered the new moon again. So it's halfway well, the point of it being a full moon where it's directly across from the sun, you know. Well, here by me, the southern tip of Florida, we're getting Cheshire cat moons. So the the moon is, what's it called when it gets like full and, and waning? The moon is waxing and waning from top to bottom. Right. And that has been that way for like a year now, and it's never changing. Are you guys still getting it waxing and waning from left to right? I always go off of the location of where the sun is. So it's always the bright side of the moon is always facing the sun is how I think of it because the sun's what's, you know, lighting it up. So, um, well, when I was in Chicago as a kid, we never got Cheshire cat moons, you know, that little smile. That's what it is. We always got, um, waxing and waning from left to right so that the sliver would be from North to South. Mm. Instead of the sliver being from east to west, like a smile. It's so, probably because you're closer to the equator than were you further north? Okay. 
Yeah, Chicago, like yeah. up by you, right? Even with you. Yeah, that's one of the things that, you know, as you can see how you rotate as you move south or north and south. Because as you well, move south, it, it turns more into a smile as it shines directly upward at the moon or downward at the moon. You know. Okay, so that would make sense. And my, yeah. my location is has shifted quite a bit. And the other thing is, does anybody in the chat know, are you supposed to see the moon during the day as kind of, you know, it's it's almost like a, you can see through it. And then are you supposed to see it at night 12 hours later? Do you see the moon every 12 hours? Is that how this works? Anybody know? Well, I think with the way you know, we spend in, in, a, in a day or whatever, it's moving. It takes it a, a, a whole month for it to move around from the sun all the way to the sun again. So at the beginning, at the new moon, it's so close to the sun that it's out during the daytime. And then as it gets early evening, you'll start seeing it. Or is it the other way around? Yeah, you'll start seeing it, you know, before the sun goes down, you'll start seeing it. And then uh, towards the end of the month, it'll be out, you know, it'll go through the point where it's out in the middle of the night, where it's a full moon. And then when it's about ready to be a new moon again, you'll see it in the early morning hours getting closer to the sun again. So that's sort of... But, you, but you're only supposed to see it once in 24 hours? Because somebody on or one of our... Or not at Mandela, all, even. Yeah, if it's too or close Or not to at all. Sun. Because um, somebody on one of the Mandela affected channels, I can't remember who said, oh my God, I can see the moon every 12 hours. This isn't right. So I, wa I went out and looked for it and I could see the moon during the day and I could see it 12 hours later. I could see it, um, I could see it during the day in the morning in the east mm -hmm. and I could see it at night in 12 hours later in the west. I could see the moon every 12 hours. Right. Yeah, so you'll see it... Um you know, at some point, I guess, on each side of the full moon cycle, you'll see it for longer and longer as it's far enough away from the sun that the sun isn't blinding you from it. And farther, far enough away from the sun that it's sh shining and lighting up enough of the side of it. You know what I mean? And then you'll see it for a good part of the day, actually. You know, I feel and, like um, in, in, in education and years and years of schooling, I never learned enough about the moon oh, or yeah. the sun. You I, know? I learned all this in adult years because I, I just became uh, curious about it. But you won't see it like go over the horizon and like out of sight and then appear 12 hours later. It's gone until it you know makes it all the way around, so, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you will. You'll see it rise on the other side if it can make it around that fast, you know. So do you think that he was right, that it should not be available to be seen every 12 hours? I, I'm just trying to think of like from horizon to horizon, how long that takes. Um, I don't know. I don't know See, that. Yeah. I, don't know. I thought I'd throw that out to the group because I'm like, I don't know if that's an uh, anomaly or if that's just normal. Right. I think if you saw it rise. And you saw it set. I think it could be out for 12 hours, couldn't it? Or is okay. It? But I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't know either. That's a good question, because I don't feel like we are, we're able to see a full half of it. So either way, I don't feel like we should ever see it for half of the day. But now I can't again. It's gone again. I can only see it at night. I can't yeah, see it during question. the day. I'll have to make but there was a, a period, a week, last week, last week, there was a period where you could see the moon in the day and the night over like two or three days. And then it stopped doing that. Right. Yeah. That's so, you know, who knows? It could be, you know, some mystery. I'm glad we still have mysteries. I wouldn't want to live in a world without any mysteries at all. And I you think know, you being in uh, closer to the equator, you would see it more. Like it, your chances of seeing it for 12 hours would be better than, say, mine up north because it's further down on the horizon for me on the southern horizon. You know what I mean? But for you, it goes pretty much right at, closer to the very top right over the top of you you know further south you go you know what i mean yep. especially the closer it's it is to the middle of summer i would think yeah it depends on the season as well yeah, you're just right like the sun's up most you know a long time of the of the day i mean if you think yep. about it it rises at 6 a.m and then goes then at nine when it's you know summertime because it's really we get a lot of sunshine that is yeah. true so it's hard to know 
I don't know. It's interesting, though, isn't it? When people point these things out to me, I, I go and look. I'm like, well, what's going on? I want to see we, it. Yeah, in the days before there was television, we wouldn't we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We'd be like, yeah, of course, you know, on this day it does this. I mean, that's all there was to look at was the stars. That's why they could tell something was a planet because it, you know, they called them wandering stars because they could tell they weren't doing. They weren't the same star patterns everywhere, like all the constellations. These things were different. They moved differently, and they did yes. different things. So. I saw a video with Carl Sagan. Does everybody remember that Carl Sagan and how interestingly he spoke in the yeah. 70s? Did you see Cosmos? Because you're younger than me, and I was a kid when I saw Cosmos. I know about it, but I didn't. I don't. I don't think I saw it originally, but I've seen stuff since the Mandela effect of his old shows. Well, this is going to tick some people off in our community. Sorry, but I just want to share. <laughs> he explained why they knew the earth was round 2000 years ago. And he did it so well. He's just sitting on a rock talking somewhere. And yeah. he goes, this very famous mathematician, can't remember his name. It wasn't like Pythagoras or anybody like that. Um, noticed that on a certain day of the year, if you put a stick in a well, for some reason he used a well, and the sun would shine over it, and on one day of the year it would make no shadow because the sun would be directly over that stick. So he had some poor guy walk 800 kilometers to another town and put a stick in the well on the same day. <laughs> and he did that because um, they measured uh, the kilometers by feet. You know, they actually, some poor guy had to go out and walk it. And on the same day, that sun would have to be overhead in both places if the world was flat. That was his theory. And it's actually provable in like on a piece of paper with a light bulb and sticking pencils through it, the same thing happens. And what he found was 800 kilometers away the stick showed a shadow and then he measured the shadow and then he got the inclination between the one that didn't have a shadow and the one that did was like six degrees and then he divided it by the 800 kilometers and he came up with the circumference of the earth being 4,000 kilometers wow. and he was only off by a few feet now if somebody 2,000 years ago, with their brain, their feet, and two sticks could figure that out. That's amazing, isn't it? That's amazing. Yeah. That is just how the human brain works, you know? Yeah, it's totally amazing that. And uh, that's one of the things, you know, that's why I say, like, you know, the flat earth model might not work if, if it's not a simulation. I mean... What I'm trying to say is I can't prove the wor wor world is a globe, for instance, you know, but I can show how everything reacts as if it's a globe. You know what I'm saying? So it, if it yeah. is a simulation and one of the best examples I have of this is I use programs where um, it simulates a 3D world or environment. Right. You're always working on a flat plane when you're creating things. It's not like it's round, but as far as how the stars and the sun move, that's all simulated in a way that appears like it's a globe, you know? So if you move it to, the, you can move the sun to a certain time of the day and things like that. You add real world, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, just the environmental, uh, like gravity and, and all of the different things to make it react like that. And you can change the gravity to be different than it is on earth, you know? Um, but if you use the, the real world physics, it was the word I was looking for, um, the sun and the moon and the, the, even the, the shadows and everything will react just like they react in real life, but it uses a rounded, at least the sky is rounded. You, you know what I mean? Even though you're, uh, the ground you're working on is flat. So yeah. you really have to look at the sun and the, you can't pr really show that the, uh, earth is round, but you can show that the sky is, if that makes sense. Gotcha. <laughs> because gotcha. We're, we're just not big enough to see beyond that. And you never load in more than that. So we could totally be in a simulation where we're on something flat. Just so I, I totally see why flat earthers see this as a flat earth, because that's all we can experience is a flat chunk of it until you can get way out into space and look back at it. There's just no way of knowing. So you have to sort of see how the stars move and everything to sort of realize that 
you know, there's no way it's sort of a dome 2,000 miles away or whatever it is with stars projected on that because our movement on the Earth shows us that the sun is really super far away and the moon is super far away. And our movement on the Earth is negligible in relationship to how far away they are. So there's no way, and uh, one of the things that, uh, when I was a teenager, I had a girlfriend that lived like 2,000 miles away, and we were on the phone looking at the same stars. If it was really like they were 2,000 miles away, then our 2,000 miles distance between each other would have prevented us from seeing the same thing, unless it's projected through the consciousness like we were talking about. Right. You follow what I'm saying? So it can be that way, but I just know that But I'm thinking what Carl Sagan said. He said, if you measure the shadows from sunlight, every 800 or every thousand miles you can actually see by based on the shadows of the sun what kind of a surface you have so would that prove that the surface is round if the shadow is not the same every thousand miles if it changes if like the sun is here right at noon and now measure the shadow every thousand miles for 10,000 miles you're going to get a different shadow, aren't you? You're going to get a different inclination of the shadow. Well, I think the way uh, it's explained in the flat earth model is that the sun moves parallel to the ground. So whether it's round, for the globe people, the roundedness of the earth and the roundedness of the travel of the sun are the same, right? And the same way in the flat earth, it stays parallel. So you're going to get the same effect with those shadows. You see what I mean? Except for the way it travels all the way around. But yeah, I see what you're saying. But, the- but Carl Sagan was saying if they thought, in the ancient humans thought if the earth was flat, you wouldn't get a difference in the shadow in 800 kilometers. You get the same because the earth is flat and 800 kilometers compared to where the sun is, isn't far enough to change the shadow. I don't know. See, I don't, conf- I don't know about the, uh, the the test in it. So if if they checked it simultaneously, right, like 800 miles apart, that, that would be different than if they just say, let's check it here today, and then at the same time tomorrow, 800 miles away. It then- was simultaneously. They had oh, to figure was. that out by sending somebody there to test the shadow. Um, eight, it was done, um, I can't remember if it was done in Greece or in Egypt. 2,000 years ago, 1,000 BC, um, they not only established the shape of the earth, but exactly how big it was. They could tell based on the changes in the shadow in 800 kilometers that it was 50 times that, or um, yeah, 50 times that, was that something like that, or 20 times that, and it was um, 4,000 kilometers in total because that was the inclination of the shadow um, in the 800 kilometers at the exact same time. Right. So in one place, the sun left no shadow, and then 800 kilometers away, it left X amount of a shadow. Then they calculated that difference and times that and somehow figured out how big the world was. Right. I th- Okay, so I think what it is is, uh, along with what I was saying with it moving parallel with it is that they imagine it's so much closer i think is what it is by being closer it makes the shadow longer and it ends up coming out the same way as maybe what it was but that's assuming the sun is just like right up there in the sky like i've seen videos where they say see the the sun went in front of the clouds and you know i haven't observed that myself you know it's like i observed the sun being so far away i mean you can get in a literally get in an airplane and fly like you know, a thousand miles within like an hour and a half and be looking at the moon out your window the whole time. And it looks like it's just following you. You remember how it was as a kid? You look at the moon, you're like, it's following us. You know, it doesn't appear to move. So, you know, it's got to be super far away. If it was 2000 miles away, you would see it slowly moving like you would see anything else slowly moving, but you can't make a difference. We can't move faster enough here on earth with our abilities, even in an airplane that a jet even, you know, to make it seem like the moon isn't following you. It will always seem like it's following you. Okay, so I've been up in an airplane at 35,000 feet many times above the clouds. Shouldn't I see something up there, like whether there's a curvature? 
<laughs> no, see, that's the whole thing. That's yeah. a lot of people say that they're like, um, where's the curve? But you won't see a curve. Think about it. If, if you're looking at the horizon, right, and there was a curve to it, then if you turned in a circle, they wouldn't meet up, right? So it's a, this is what I like to do. I like imagine I, I'm on a basketball and I'm like a tiny little speck. And if you turned in a okay. circle, you would only see a flat horizon. You wouldn't, it wouldn't look like a curve. It only looks like a curve when you're holding the ball out in front of you, you know? But if you're a little speck on there, you'd see about as far as one of those little lumps on the basketball, one of those little bumps. On How there. far do we have to go to see the curve? That's the question. And wouldn't it be nice if we could send somebody up there that we trusted with a camera? That's the real issue. The real issue is that we don't trust the authorities to tell us the truth anymore. <laughs> exactly. We got to send like Shane up or me <laughs> up or somebody we know up with a camera to beam it back to us and go, look, guys, yeah. you're on a flat plane or you're you're on a triangle. You're on a ball. You yeah. know, somebody that we could trust with a camera to, to actually show us what we're on that's why i came up early on i don't know if you saw that video but what i did was i took some footage of um where somebody sends up one of those gopro cameras on a balloon right and i realized that you can't see the the you can't see the curvature but what you can do is you can use the distortion of those gopro cameras you know how they make it look round it you can use yeah. that to your favor right so as and this is what i did i sent as the go i took footage and I put a line directly in the center of the footage uh, of somebody's YouTube video. Anybody can do this. So what you do is you put a line right in the middle. And whenever the camera, because it's kind of moving around and bouncing around all sorts of different ways or whatever. But whenever the very center of the screen is lined up with the horizon, if it's flat, if the earth is flat, then your line should stay lined up perfectly. Oh. And if it tilts up a little bit, it's going to make it bow this way. If it tilts down a little bit, it's going to bow this way. So okay. as long as the horizon's dead center, the line stays straight. But what you see is once it reach about, reaches about 30,000 feet, you have to point up above the horizon to make it look flat from your point of view. So you can actually oh. use that as a tool. The lens distortion. So what does that mean, Shane? Does that mean that we're on a round planet? That means it's not perfectly flat. So it is rounded, but that doesn't mean it's not lenticular. So, I, I mean, I've really tried to be as objective as I can about it. You know what I mean? And we could be living on a contact lens, but I do know it's not perfectly ah. flat. <laughs> and we do have lenticular oh. things in our galaxy. You know, the galaxy itself is lenticular. You know? This is interesting. Yeah. So, like a con contact. So, take the Earth model of a globe, cut it in half and put it on a flat surface, we could be living on that. Right, right? or more like a lump on a basketball. So it's like rounded, yeah. or like a contact lens. So it could be like two yeah. contact lenses sandwiched together and it could be more like you know, a, a gigantic saucer. We could be on this huge UFO. <laughs> oh my gosh, I saw a movie like that. It was really? kind of creepy though, it wasn't a fun one. And um, <laughs> they definitely, when they woke up, they, they thought they were in a different world, yeah. which is kind of Mandela-like. And then they got to the edge of it and it was a giant flying saucer trying to simulate the world that they had just come from, the world that they oh, were picked wow. up from. Yeah. So that could be what and the it, ice wall is to keep us from getting to the edge yeah. of the UFO. <laughs> and it, it left it like that with them like looking at the edge in space going, oh, my God, we've, we're not on planet Earth anymore. Yeah. And it didn't tell you where they just picked up from planet Earth and brought across the universe, you know, as kind of test subjects. Or did something happen to planet Earth and they were like rescued and they didn't want to upset them. So they created a hologram of Earth on this massive spaceship for them, you know. That's a great explanation of the Mandela effect, isn't it? You know, Earth yeah. disappeared, something happened to it, and boom, we got picked up and put on a, a really good but imperfect simulation of Earth on a spaceship. It'd be called Spaceship Earth. Oh, uh, that's, let's see. Uh, oh, since Sherry's making jokes about contact lenses, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think um, when I think about uh, some of the stuff I've seen, because I watch a lot of flat earth videos because it, it really intrigues me to really stretch my imagination to imagine how that they could pull it off. Because I don't really care one way or the other. If it was flat, I'd want to know. Yeah, I don't you know care. What I, mean? I don't have a dog in the race, so to speak. Yeah, me too. I'm happy <laughs> with what I mean. If we're on the back be... of a turtle, 
You know, I'm okay with that too. Yeah, I, like I think to... it would be neat myself. So yeah. I've really thought about it and tried to come up with a theory that would work. I'm like, well, how could it work? Because I, I think the, the main theory that's put out there for Flat Earth doesn't work. But that doesn't mean there's not one out there that could work. So I've worked on that. Just like in my mind, of like, how could they pull this off? How really could it really be flat? And one of the things that seems to bother me is that, and I haven't done this myself. I've just trusted other people's work. So you know, there's only so much you can do with that. But it looks like the curvature of the Earth isn't as much as it should be. Meaning, oh. meaning like when you look for the horizon and you'd see things disappear over the horizon, they don't seem to disappear as fast as they should be. Now, I don't know if they're fudging the numbers with that, you know, because... Are you talking like ships on the ocean? Yeah. Or, Are you talking about like airplanes in the sky? Yeah, I'm just talking about how, how the... Uh, what I'm getting at is the numbers would appear that if it is a globe, it's way bigger than we've been told it is. So, Well, I've been hearing lately that just like our consciousness is expanding, the Earth is expanding. So 5D Earth may just be a bigger version yeah. of what we remembered as our 3D Earth. It might just be bigger. If you start looking at where continents are now, yeah. there's like this massive Pacific Ocean, which is huge, and there's nothing in it. Have you seen that? It's like our our computer models of Earth don't even make sense to me anymore. Have you looked at that chain where you look at the middle of the Pacific Ocean and you can't see a single continent? Yeah, that is weird. And, you know, one of the things yeah. I saw in Leak Project was talking about how instead of the – because one of the theories, they, the theory of Pangaea, that we sort of were one big mm -hmm. continent and it's mm -hmm. like we had a big chunk knocked off and it's like the planet's trying to – you know, sort of level itself out or whatever. But one of them is that we were actually much smaller and we're expanding out this way and there were yeah. sort of cracking apart and that there's this gray matter that pushes out and it, it does. It's like the earth is expanding. Yeah. And um, the other thing is we might be going back to Pangaea because all the continents are getting shoved on one side of the earth and they're getting pushed together. And like, um, do you remember Cuba? It was never that long and that big. It's almost Cuba has almost completely closed off the Gulf yeah. into a lake. It's just getting closer and closer and closer to Florida and um, whatever else is over there. You know, it's just making the Gulf closed instead of open. Have you noticed that? There's some real yeah. strange things going on with with. But then again, we're looking at computer simulations. We're not looking at photographs. That's true. You know, yeah, and it's coming from people that's you know shown us we can't trust them before. So, so why should know. we believe their little pictures now? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's really an interesting time yeah. to be in. You know, and I feel like we have to figure this stuff out for ourselves. Yeah, I'm glad I have that map that changed underneath my artwork because I now I know for a fact that it's not like they just got rid of all the maps, switched it. And did some kind of switcheroo because my map within my file that was on a hidden layer change. So I want to see it again. I want to see what happened to Cuba on your map. Yeah, there's like some land that is just there that wasn't even there before. So. Yeah, it's like we're getting more land in places and we're getting more water in places. So somebody was saying that the earth was contracting with the drought and the, the fissures that are opening up, meaning it's drying out and getting smaller and cracking. And they said, no, no, no. Oh, it was a physicist. And um, she's got a channel and she does stuff with Wayne Steiger. Is that his name from WSO? Mm -hmm. And she was saying she thinks the earth is actually expanding, which is kind of cool because our consciousness is expanding. The earth is expanding. So 5D is like, is, is creating itself right here right where we are and we'll either see it or we won't yeah that's interesting and you know i really need to go back and watch that video i did of that because for all i know i might be pointing out in the middle of the water saying look at this here this wasn't there and there's nothing there now or whatever i've seen stuff like that happen so i kind of want to revisit that too yeah so if you do want to do a video where you revisit your map compared to today's google earth that would be really cool to see if it's even more dramatic yeah the changes yeah, I was actually going to do that with Lone Lone Eagle. I started to say Lone Wolf. Lone Eagle. Yeah, because Lone he's... Eagle is drawing the edges. He's yeah. like doing this project where he's tracing the edges now just to see how they change. Yeah. 
But he, uh, when I sent him, when he saw the original one, he said, wow, it seems like you're from a different earth than me because he saw the differences, but they weren't the differences he remembered. So, yeah, so this like, happened to me that? today, too, with um, the Rosenberg. Um, a lot of us, um, Dead GPK did a video from Dark Wolf's Den, who did one from the spiritual scientist, and then it got to me. And it's like everybody, it's like the information's going from person to person to person to person. I recall when I studied quantum physics and, Ein and Einstein spooky science at a distance, the Einstein Rosenberg bridge, which is a wormhole. Yeah. And now it's changed to the Einstein Rosen bridge. And everybody recalls it, you know, one way or the other. And then sometimes Mandela effects, they recall it three different ways and four different ways. So my theory now is that we jump timelines staying in one place and our consciousness expands to different versions of our reality of our world so you might be standing next to me and you might be seeing and witnessing the seventh version of earth and i can be next to you witnessing the sixth version of earth and somebody on the other side of you might be looking at the 12th version of earth and you know somebody down the street might be be on the 24th version of earth we might all be focusing on the a different dimension of earth and, and be in the same even, place here's the thing about it though and when i saw um somebody was talking about a dmt trip and i'm like this is exactly how i see it right but they were talking about because along with what you're saying there it's not like the 24th earth where all of these things are exactly the same because what you'll find it is if you can agree with the Einstein Einstein Rosenberg bridge, you'll have something else that you don't agree on. So yes. it's like each individual that makes item, another version. Right. But what I think it is, is I think we're in the soup of consciousness of different memories and versions or whatever. And we're just so, sort of selectively tapping into different parts of of that soup you know what i mean of consciousness rather than it being like a definitive line that we're both from the same line where everything's the same i think it's more like we, we've got our smartphone there that's tuned in to say 10 different television stations and all of our 10 stations are 10 different mandela effects for instance and they can be any combination it's not so much that if, if you're tuned into ABC and they're tuned into ABC, then all the other stations are going to be the same because you might remember the thinker statue or JFK being the opposite of me, but everything else we talk about might be exactly the same. And I think what you tap into, and that sort of goes along with like doctors not seeing the anatomy changes because, because they went to school for it, they're tapped into a different, more connected stream with the, ver the version of reality that we're in. So they don't seem to see those changes, you know what I'm saying? Or, or is there a mechanism in the brain that anytime there's a change, your brain it instantly adapts to it and goes, oh, it's always been that way. So our doctors seeing the changes which would end their paradigm of reality and really send them over the, the deep end. Oh, they, yeah. they think they're crazy. Oh, so their brain automatically says that change has always been that way. Are we seeing slightly different realities or is our brain compensating with matter around us in one reality that's constantly shifting and changing and morphing and adapting? to human consciousness. That's the hard question. What came first in the soup? Yeah. Is the soup shifting realities or is the soup one reality and the brain makes sense of it? Yeah. Consciousness sorts it out so it looks linear, it seems linear, but it's not. Yeah, totally, totally agree. I don't know. Because you know, it's, it's got to have all time in there. And forth. Yeah, it's got to have all the times and space in there too. So it's like, the, Everything. Uh, yeah, it's the, the the whole of consciousness all balled together in nowness. So, well, you know, people say, you know, that time is happening past, present, and future all at once. Yeah. Which would mean everything that's ever been or ever will be in this space on this planet is here right now. Yeah. And we would go crazy if we saw all of it at once. We couldn't, like... It, we, we, it would be overload. We couldn't interpret it or make sense of it. 
Yeah, yeah. If it happened all at once. So are our little brains picking and choosing our reality moment by moment by moment, which is why you're cho picking a few different memories than I am and somebody else is picking a few different memories? I don't know. It's it's fascinating, but we never would have known reality is so interesting if it wasn't for the Mandela effect. Yeah. I mean, the, even this conversation, I'm having a blast with this conversation because of the topic, you know, it's such a fun yeah, we thing never, to discuss. We, years ago, if we didn't have the Mandela Effect community and Mandela Effect videos and Mandela Effect live chats, we would never explore reality as deeply as we're, we're going now. We're diving deep. Oh, we definitely. really are. But we're not coming up with any answers yet. <laughs> have you noticed that? Well, I'm still without answers, you know? Yeah, definitely. I do one video one day and I'm like, Oh, it's holographic multi-dimensions right here. Yeah. And then the next day, it's a soup. It's just a cosmic right. soup like you described. <laughs> totally, yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I think I'm safe on the fence with anything because anytime I come up with a, a theory that, or somebody I hear a theory, I'm like, that works. And then my brain starts to work it through and then I start to find flaws in it. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. Like, oh, that, uh. I find flaws in my own concepts oh, of reality. Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, so, and I leave the videos up. If they contradict each other, I don't care. It's just like my personality. Get <laughs> used to it. One day we're in this reality and the next day we jump into the other. But I'll tell you what, I do believe um, merging timelines is better because you get rid of the paradox of bumping into yourself. So if you're here, Shane, and you quantum jump to a better version of you on purpose or not, you're not going to bump into yourself there because those two Shanes are going to merge. You're going to merge when you jump. But in, in essence, I just screwed that version of me because I just made him go to my old crappy timeline, correct? <laughs> no, that's the thing. If it's all a cosmic soup of waves, right? you're in a master avatar and you can just literally suck any version of Shane into you yes. without bumping him anywhere else. Right. He just becomes a part of your reality like you're now conscious of that chain that's why the term timeline sort of dissolves away any kind of way yeah. I, I know it's used quite a bit but in what i think comes to mind first when you think of timelines sort of like this train of all these different trains and versions and you're hopping from train to train i don't think it's timeline in that sense as much as it is like your linear experience you know like what you're saying so you're in the soup and you, your linear experience might shift around a little bit but you're not ever going to bump into another version of you because no. it's still just your consciousness right there so you're changing that one perspective so there's just the one train but you're adding things to it you know yeah I, I the way i could figure out what you're saying is to make you the television set yeah. And there's a million versions of Shane out there. Actually, there's it's infinite. Yeah. And you can tune into whatever version you like by changing the signal slightly. Uh, so never are you ever going to bump into Shane somewhere and upset him with a, a second Shane because you literally just tune into a vibration of Shane. Right. And as soon as you do, you become one with it. So you, it's kind of like that movie Click where... He would fast forward it and he would be on autopilot and, you know, the wife would say, don't you remember we discussed this? And he's like, no, I didn't remember. And he was sort of on autopilot. So I've got all these autopilot versions of myself that I could switch my consciousness over to. Yeah, it makes sense because in the um, double slit method of the wave versus the particle, yeah. they're basically saying the potentiality of every possible outcome is just swimming around in that murky cosmic pool exactly. that you were talking That's how about, I view that it. soup. Yeah, and so that, I, don't, I don't really view it as like a million versions of me out there, just a million potential or uh, unlimited potential that at any moment I can, what they say, you know, uh, pop the, uh, the wave, the, collapse the wave function, as it were. You through know, observation. That, yeah, right. the observer collapses. Yeah. the wave function into one possibility moment by each moment each moment that we're awake and conscious we are collapsing the possibilities into one version exactly yeah but that totally. means that all the versions of you doing a million different things are all out there around you you just can't see them right so i view like, like the potentials there but they aren't really there 
I don't know because in like atomic structure, they really are there. The waves of potential really are there. And then they collapse into an atomic physical atom at some point. But the waves in potentiality are real and they're out there. So at any point, did you decide to move to a new state? Right, but that would be collapsing the wave function in the way I view it. That would be collapsing it into that potential. But if it's just an infinite potential, then anything could be possible, and you could collapse those infinite possibilities rather than there's like a million different versions that happen that I can jump to the timeline. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. It, it's better to look at it that there aren't a million different chains going out there doing different things, but that there's a million Unlimited. different potentials exactly. of you doing different things but then you chose one of them right. and that kind of let the others kind of disappear instead of them being out there doing their thing as well right. that's the thing that upsets people when they think of themselves out there not marrying the person they married not having the children they had not um oh sherry was talking about that on a video yeah. um when she was when she when she interviewed abraham hicks yeah. and she asked abraham a question and she said she burst into tears. It's on one of her videos. And she said, I couldn't imagine living. Oh, that was about reincarnation, though. So that was slightly different. But, you know, if, I, if when I met my husband, I had two choices. I could marry him or not, right? In this version, I married him and we had a beautiful child. That was the outcome of that. And then um, is there somebody, another version of me living somewhere that didn't marry him? Uh, like you, I don't think that's true. I don't think there's a million versions of me living different lives. And that when we quantum jump, we bump into ourselves. I think once you make that decision out of all the possibilities of that moment, it becomes one thing. Yeah. You choose in the moment. You, um, what is it called when you... when you Collapse the wave function. You collapse the wave into yeah. material existence. That's it. The other versions just didn't happen. Right. And that, except except when the Mandela effect came around, then it's like, what the heck? Somebody collapsed a different wave function. You know what I mean? Oh. And that's, that's where that's where that that theory starts to break down. And that's why people yeah. have a problem. When Unless we go it. back to the first theory we talked about with expanded consciousness, which means our consciousness is getting bigger, so we can see other realities around us whereas before our consciousness was very small and contained so when those things happened around us we couldn't see it right. i couldn't see the different things happening around me but now i can yeah and that's that's interesting because when you think of it like that that gets back into the fact that when we experience the past, we don't ever experience the past in the past. We only experience the past in the now. Even if you look at a photo of when you were a child, you're still looking at it right this moment. So when something's different in it, what I'm saying is if you look at the photo and you're like, uh, say you're in front of a store that the logo's changed, right? Or you're holding a Coke and the logo, you know it was one way, but now it looks different. If you were technically going to get in the time machine and travel back to the date the picture was taken, you would be holding a false memory, just like they say. They say we have false memory. Now, they don't mean it in that way. Except, <laughs> except with the thinker statue. The thinker changed, but the girl in front of it didn't. Do you remember exactly. that picture? Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. She didn't change to reflect That's the how thinker you know statue. It's being uh. hacked. That's how you know it's being somehow affected in the now not in the past when the photo was really taken. Because, there we go. Yeah. So the change is occurring in the now because the thinker statue changed, right? From this to this, right. but the girl in front of it mimicking him didn't change. She's still doing this. Even the 18 school uh, yes. softball girls, there's no way they all got it wrong and they all got their fist through their forehead. But now you Okay, look so up in the past, they reflected it correctly, but since the past, in the, now, it in the now, it's changed. Yeah. But this is the one thing I find fascinating. The Mandela effect cannot change humans. It can't change the people in the picture. Right. They're sovereign. Their action in that moment is sovereign. It cannot be changed by the Mandela effect. Yeah, but and that the gets logos into the... and everything else can. 
Yeah, that gets into how uh, it seems like um, a residue is created whenever you introduce human consciousness into it. So if somebody wrote out a Febreze ad, I've seen it where things are handwritten out and somebody just knew how to f spell Febreze or whatever it was, so they spelled it like they know it was at the time, and it survives as uh, residue because the mind, or, or maybe they learned a song that the lyrics have changed. Yeah. Why They've does residue it. exist? Why does it exist? It's the human why hasn't Why hasn't AI wiped it out? We know there's AI, yeah. all our residue, we're pulling it up from the internet, right? We're not always pulling it up from our bookshelves. Yeah. Your map you are, my Bible I am, but the rest of it is on the internet. So my worry is, I think I was speaking to Jen's gems through comments, um, is that the residue is going to disappear because AI will erase it. Right. AI will go in and remove every single old version of something so that we can't go, but look, see? Right. But I think like when you think of it as like somebody's performing a song that they learned years ago and they memorized the lyrics... And you can still find like them doing the cover tune, singing it with the way w people remember the lyrics being. They've been singing it since they memorized it that way. So now that someone's changed the reality and it always looks like it went that way, it it's just like the picture with the, the people with, in front of the thinker. At that moment that they studied the lyrics, memorized the lyrics, have been performing it for decades, that way you're not going to change their mind because... Right. Because they're gets, sovereign. Exactly. You can change a picture or a statue, but you can't change a human being. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. That's kind of cool, That which kind of indicates that we are the creators of this wacky reality, if you think about it. Because the one thing that can't be changed is the person who's actually interpreting the reality around but that's, them. That's even, you know, <laughs> that's not even like something you can depend on all the time. Because, you know, we have doctors that, you know, they would have specifically remembered learning the location of the heart in med school but now they'll specifically remember learning it being where it is so you know what i'm saying so it's not even that's the whole thing that makes this whole thing so difficult is that there's no absolutes with anything no it's, but it's, it's growing yeah, people it's so in the subjective. mandela effect community what we've got it's contagious it's growing all they have to see is one paradox that negates their memory and they go, wait a minute, you're right. I remember it being that way too. They just need one really good one. And then suddenly they're Mandela affected. So my, I think everybody's going to be Mandela affected eventually. I eventually it's going to spread and everybody's going to be aware that matter is flexible, pliable, and changeable. Yeah, and you can't count on it to stay yeah. the same from one moment to the next. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And I think there's something for everybody, too. But and I'm so glad it took me a year to see it happening because I got to look at it. I got to be that person that responded like, yeah, I see it and act like it's no big deal because you really you really don't believe it on some level. You just doubt your mind because it's easier to think I must just be misremembering it. You know, even like Fruit Loops and some of the things that I know for sure now that I've had the thinker and the Bible scriptures change. Those were enough to make me realize, oh, I didn't really believe that about Fruit Loops. I just thought with Looney Tunes and Fruit Loops, I must have thought I was, because those are ones that I was sure about at the time. But mm -hmm. when it, at the end of the day, it was like, I just don't trust my memory over impossible things happening. And I think people just need those things, those things that there's just no way that they can't have changed, you know, like with the thinker for me, yeah. to get them over yeah. that hump. So there appears to be this hump. For somebody like me, anyway, that just doesn't trust their memory whatsoever. I know how bad memories can be, and I've seen it at work. And you know, yeah, and yeah. Just, sometimes we just don't recall things a hundred percent perfectly. That's different to the Mandela effect because right. people who aren't Mandela affected go, "Oh, you're just not remembering it correctly." They don't see the difference yeah. between kind of not remembering and the Mandela effect. Right. Like I think recall vector did um, Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Now, I watch that movie every year of my childhood because one of our local television stations in Chicago played it every Easter. Yeah. So, you know, and then I bought the movie and then my mom bought the movie. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an iconic line where Dorothy says, Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Well, now she's saying... Toto, I have a feeling that we're not in Kansas anymore. Right. And everybody's going, 
no, it's I don't think we're in Toto. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Yeah. And not I have a feeling that we're not. And then other people are going, oh, my God, I'm getting confused. I remember both. Now, right. that's interesting. The people, Party Puppy was saying on Recall Vector, holy moly, I remember both now. To me, that's the sign that there's a mechanism in our consciousness which takes something that disturbs our reality and goes, no, it was always that way. So now you have both memories, right? And that happens quite a bit to me, uh, that I have dual memories. And, and I'll, yeah, I'll do it on accident. Like a lot of times with lyrics of songs, we're like, well, I think just the first time around in the chorus, he sings it this way. And then the second time around, he sings it this way. And then I listen to it and it's only the one way. And so that's sort of the way my brain rationalizes it, especially as a songwriter that, well, you sing it this way and then you're going to sing it this way. So when I have a dual memory within lyrics or whatever, that's how my brain sort of makes sense of it automat by default. You know what I mean? So it's not until somebody points you it out. You suddenly remember both, which yeah. makes neither of them accurate right. and makes neither of them true and makes you feel really wobbly. You're like, oh, my God, I remember it both ways. Like that movie, um, if you build it, he will come. And yeah. if you build it, they will come. I remember both. Me too. I remember it, both. So I'm totally. like, I have no opinion on that. You and, know? Then there, and then there's but, a lot of things like you were just talking about with uh, The Wizard of Oz when – they showed the scarecrow with the pistol and stuff. It was like, he didn't yeah. have a pistol, but I looked Never. and it looks familiar. Why does it look familiar when I know he didn't have a... So it's like you're picking up on something with the new way. Well, there's two options here. It looks familiar because you've experienced both timelines and everything's happening at once. Or it looks familiar because your brain has a mechanism that saves you from a crazy paradigm of reality that keeps you from going insane. So every change becomes familiar. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> You know, and it's like baloney. The brain's making that up just to make you feel confident and safe and secure. Yeah, that's true. It could be either or. But yeah, yeah. sometimes. And you know how one of the things that, and it's happened quite a bit watching uh, Moneyback 73. So he'll present something, right? A voting video. And he'll say, what yeah. do you remember? And I'll remember two ways. I'm like, well, it's either this or this. And that's exactly what he, yeah, and that's what he presents. And I'm like, I remember both, man. And it's. Sometimes I'll know and I'll be, I, I won't be able to figure out which way it was and which way it is now, but I'll know which choices it's going to be, you know. Now, this is what's weird. With money bags, more than any other video producer of Mandela Effects, I agree with him all the time. I'm like, he and I shared the same reality because I'm never stuck between yes and no. It's always a yes vote for me. And I'm waiting for him to put up something that I can disagree with and go, nope. Nope, I don't remember it that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, some of his, I've noticed that it's a, a, a perception thing, like the Laurel and Yanni thing. I'll be uh -huh. able to hear it both ways, and I'm like, why? And it's usually about something I don't have a, a, a history with. So it'd be like, uh, you know, the word you or him or something, and I'll listen to it, and I'll be able to hear it both ways. But, you know, I don't have a memory of saying, oh, I remember growing up and singing along to it, and it was this way. It's like I can just hear it both ways now, and I'm like, it's the whole, totally the Laurel Yanni thing all over again. Yeah, yeah, but then like when Star Wars comes along and it's Luke, I am your father, there's no in-between. People are so adamant about that one. Yeah. I'm adamant about it. I saw that movie a hundred times because of my nephews. You know, <laughs> we learned every line in that movie and it was Luke. And then when you hear the residue of the, the actor saying Luke, I am your father. There's no way you can throw in a no. No, I'm your father. Right. It just doesn't work. Some of the Mandela effects are so convincing and others are so wishy-washy. Even that one, though, even though I, I'm pretty sure about that one, I can't put it in my 100% pile because, simply because it's been played off of so many times. And I've heard it so much since then, like with Tommy Boy, he sang it into the fan and stuff. I can't rule out the possibility. I don't believe this is the, the, the truth. I just wouldn't bet my... Some Mandela effects, I would bet my life on the fact that they've changed because it's it would be like... Oh, yeah, like the lion and uh, the lying lion down with the lamb. Yeah. yeah. Some of them I would, without hesitation, wager my life. That one I wouldn't because I'm just not 100% sure. I... I'm 99.9, .9, but not enough to bet my life on it, you know, even You see, when you talk about Mandela effects like depend or depends, 
the only difference is an S and I never bought that product. So I can't tell you, you know, or the Home Depot and Home Depot and Chuck E. Cheese and Chuck E. Cheeses. When they're little changes like that, I'm like, I don't know. But when they're big changes, like the Thinker statue, that's a huge change. Right. That's not dropping and adding an S. Right. That's something know? I looked at on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> And the Mona Lisa, I remember studying art and going to see the Mona Lisa when I was like 12. My dad lived in Egypt and we'd stop off somewhere and we went to museums all the time. Yeah. And it was like, oh, she's not really smiling or is she? Is right. she smiling? There's nah, no she's not smiling. Now. Yes, she is. There's a tiny little curve to her little lip. But it was smirking. And now she's like grinning. Right. Yeah, it she's was... smirking at people. And her eyes weren't smiling at all before, and now they look smiley. Yeah. And Dolly's braces, Ronnie, in Florida. Oh, about. forget that's, it. Dolly's braces yeah, no is <laughs> definite. I mean, I'm that one, is to me like the biggest proof. Yeah. It just because looks silly. the joke doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, when she smiles at him, you know, and she has no braces on. The the joke is not there. Right. You know, it just doesn't work. And then there was that commercial that had the, the, the girl at the counter smile with braces on that and it played off of that scene in the movie. I saw the commercial. And yeah. None of that makes sense anymore because he didn't have his metal teeth while he's checking out. She just, it was only playing on the dolly part of it, you know. It was playing on part. the dolly part of it, the braces yeah. and the metal teeth. Well, yeah. This is fun, and I'm enjoying it. And I don't mind if other people have different Mandela effects. It doesn't oh, yeah. upset me. Yeah. And I don't mind if they don't remember my Mandela effects. You know, but I don't think we're on a million different timelines in space, jumping and hopping like you. I think we're in the soup. I yeah. think we're in the Mandela effect soup, really. Because of the, there's a few different residues that don't make sense with jumping from one place to another. Like we talked about, like the, the people posing next to the, the statue. And yeah. And it would be like so that. hard to take your atomic structure with you oh, yeah. and move your atoms of your body into a completely different reality. You know, that whole Occam razors thing, which is a stupid word for the simplest solution is always the best. Right. It's better to think that your mind is focusing in on different realities. Yeah. From here yeah. than to think your whole body is jumping light years and light years and light years away into new dimensions. Yeah. That's a much harder thing to accomplish than to let it come from your mind, you know, going into different dimensions from your one body. Yeah. And that's GPK easier. Is, that GPK is talking about what you were mentioning about the Einstein Rosenberg bridge is now the Einstein Rosen bridge. And I got it from GPK and he got it from dark Den's wolf and they got it from the spiritual scientist. So we were like really kind and we gave everybody credit. I'm like linking everybody's channel. He's <laughs> mentioned. Yeah. I got it from dead. That's the, that, I was going to tell you that's, I got a, it from him. that's the dual memory one for me. It's like, as soon as you, you were like the, the Einstein Rosenberg bridge, I'm like, yeah, that's what I remember. And then you said, now it's the Einstein Rosen. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> that sounds familiar too. Oh so, my God. Yeah. I have one memory on that one and that's the Rosenberg. But then I'm trying to research dead. If he changed his name from Rosenberg to Rosen, I'm yeah. trying to see if like the family made a name change when they emigrated to New York, New York or New Jersey, just like, the Windsors, the current king, queen of England, is a Battenberg. And it wasn't popular in Germany to have a German, I mean, World War One and Two to have a German name. So they changed it from Battenberg to Windsor. Uh. So now I'm wondering if this family made some kind of a name change along the way. And that's why we have these split dualities of, of, of different versions of uh. that man. His name was Nathan. I know his first name was Nathan. Nathan Rosenberg. Right. <laughs> and Einstein. What was Einstein's first name? Does anybody know or remember? Albert. Albert. Albert, Albert yeah. of course. Or was it Einstein? I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would be so funny. That would be hilarious. I know. But, you know, Is it every Einstein time there's been some Einstein? really big ones like that, I'm like, finally, won everybody you know. And they're like, no, it's always been that way. And I'm just like. Let me just go back to my house and lock myself <laughs> away. 
Oh yeah. yeah, there's this there's some people in our community who are are practicing like, you know, getting involved with the Mandela effect and experimenting with it. And it's really cool. They're really good channels. SMQ and I forget the girl. I don't know, is it Chick, the Chick channel? She does like these late night live streams and she's got this great calming voice to listen to. But anyway, they've chosen the um the Philadelphia experiment. Oh. No, the Manhattan Project. Manhattan Project? Is that what Gosh, now I'm not sure which one they chose. But I'm like, guys, be careful. If you're going to right? delve with by putting your mind into the time frame when all of that was being done, there were some pretty not so great consequences of those experiments. Do you remember the one where the people in the ship, got the stuck people, in the metal and stuff? Yeah, they got stuck in the metal. So personally, that's what you're Albil doing, Al Billick one, Billick or whatever one, right? Where he ended up going into the future real far and came back i think that was all part of that same one i think that was the philadelphia one what was or was it the manhattan project i'm confused now what which one did they get stuck in the ship they were trying think, to time travel i think it was the and philadelphia quantum experience. jump the ship into another dimension and mixing them together though the manhattan i think project. so too but my point is if you're going to go and experiment with something like that yeah. you're basically doing remote viewing by going back to when something happened and be very careful because at the time in our current linear timeline, when that happened, it was very dramatic and it was not positive. It was very negative. So you don't really want to put your mind back into a huge negative event through remote viewing. I, I, I think that would be suspect taking on a lot. Yeah. That's kind of like what the QHHT sessions and stuff how they have to sort of be the observer and not get too involved with it because it can just be really traumatic to have to relive something all over again and yeah i wouldn't yeah. want to be there and even as an, the as observer and see people stuck in the metal like that i think exactly yeah. so if you're going to remote view try to remote view something positive from our past pick a positive event yeah, I mean, or a non-emotional event There's huh Ronnie in Florida saying the Manhattan Project was the atomic bomb. So, yeah, that's right. That's when they, I guess that, that footage we have of them detonating that that first one where that nuke town with all the buses, I think that was the Manhattan Project. Okay, so the Philadelphia experiment? No. Yeah. Is that right? Was the ship where they were moving a ship through time and space? The green fog and stuff, and yeah. And they jumped overboard and went into a different time. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm about ninety yeah, percent. Well, hey, I live really ship. close yeah. to the Bermuda Triangle here, so I'm gonna like keep my dimensions <laughs> like really clean. I'm gonna keep them clean in my mind so right. that I don't like, jump over into another totally. dimension or timeline that I haven't agreed with. You know, right. totally. Like that movie where Will Ferrell wakes up like in the Stone Age with dinosaurs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool. So when I go back, I can. I think I'll, I'll be able to edit out the uh, connection problem. So. Yeah, me too. When I upload it next week, I didn't know I'll just edit it out. Diana. And we better go do the. Um, we better do the um, meditation because this is the longest we've ever been on. Is anybody still in the room? Do we have oh, anybody? Yeah. Or they all go to people. bed. No, they're all chatting it up, talking about stuffers, stuff ah! talk, stuffing. Oh, wait, well. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Craft. I mean, come on. It I mean, was never craft. craft. Does anybody in the room remember craft stuffing? No, craft was always cheese in my book, man. It was never Yeah, stuffing. it was never craft stuffing. Never, never, never. So that's one timeline we can all agree on, right? <laughs> yeah. And you even hear people <laughs> now, you'll look up videos and they're like, then just get a box of Stouffer stove top and. You know, yes, Stouffer stove top like, stuffing. I grew up stofers. on it. We need to contact all those people. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what the box looked like. It was blue. Does anybody remember the blue box? I know it had blue on it. That's so funny that you said that because, like, we would always do dressing at Thanksgiving, and Stouffer's was like just any time but Thanksgiving in our home. Yeah, That's actually, awesome. my mom made her own for Thanksgiving, and it was yeah. pretty complicated. And Stouffer's, it was the any time but Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. We got like, the really good stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And then um, the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know, I'm really confused about his tie, but it never looks right. It's not good if it's white. It's not good if it's green. When it's blue, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I like Wait, the blue tie. What is it now? I remember blue. Is it white or green? Yeah, now or? it's white. 
it's white and somebody did a video with it green and I think they were just messing with me. I think oh. they just made it green for the video, but now it's white, isn't yeah. it, guys? I it's remember like, blue and then it seems like it had like a blue band around his hat or something. He had blue around his neck and a little bit on his yeah, hat. Yeah, I'm blue. I'm blue too. And now it's all white. Yeah. A hundred percent. And you know, when I describe this to people who aren't Mandela affected, they're like, oh yeah, because they changed. They changed the logo. They changed this. But what they don't realize is when you go back and check, they never claim existed. they never changed it. They claim it was always that yeah. way. Yeah. That's what's so trippy about that. I did and that that's with the hard VW. to explain to people. Like they just added the line. And it's like, that's what I thought when I saw it. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad they added that line. Now I can tell it's a V and a W. And I went through this exactly. whole thing before the Mandela effect. And I was like... Oh, all these years I never knew. All these the years I couldn't see the V and the W, and now I can see it. And then <laughs> right. you go back, and the line's always been there. But you know what? I was watching a movie um, with Katherine Heigl, and it was a silly movie, and she's in a red Volkswagen, and it has no line. It, like, zooms right in in the front of this red Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. And there it is in the movie, no line. Well, some of them are hard to see because it's all chrome. Even the divot in it's chrome. Yep. But no, this was like I can I can tell you he zoomed in on it, took a photograph of it. You know, it was just no line for sure. And isn't it like um Back to the Future has the white van or the blue van, but it's Volkswagen and it has no line in it. Oh, uh, so yeah, that's that's just strange because that's another dual memory I have. I'm like, yeah, it was that one. No, it was that one. I can remember both vans, so I'm not sure. Well, is that because you've experienced both and all of those timelines or because your brain is keeping your reality nice and neat and orderly so you don't get too crazy? You know, it could be <laughs> either. Yeah, I often think it's because like you watch something and then you see it and it doesn't align with your memory. So your brain is just like, oh, you must be mistaken. It rewrites it with the new memory. It rewrites it. Yeah. It's like um, like those old cassette machines, remember? Yeah. If you put um, a cassette in and you didn't pop the tabs out and you hit record by accident, oh. you record it over your cassette. Yeah. It's just like that. Yeah. And it's just right like that. It. And you know what? I knew that yeah. was going to happen because this one preacher was going through Bible verses and this little old lady that you could tell she probably just sat at home reading her Bible all the time. She had all the changes down, like even the judge not lest you be judged. She said, judge Seriously? not that you be not judged. And, you know, because she read it all the time. If you're sitting memory. reading it, it just overwrites the memories. Like for me, I hadn't read the Bible in a decade because I read it so, I read it dozens of times. I felt like, yeah, I've read it so many times now that, and I haven't. And now I see looking back on it, it was, you know, it was meant to be that way. So I preserve those memories and. You know, I didn't overwrite all of those memories from rereading it over and over again because all of my reading was done decades ago. You know what I mean? Me so. too. Your video pushed me into my Bible from Loyola University where the Jesuits gave me a different Bible than you have. Remember? Because I sent yeah. you copies of it. Yeah. And I didn't realize that. And I went and looked up the, uh, the Isaiah and the other quotes that you mentioned and I've underlined it and highlighted it because I had to memorize certain things for certain tests. Yeah. It's changed in mine. It's not only changed in the King James Version. What version do I have? Do you remember? Was it? I can't remember. I do remember the, the first verse in the Bible. It seemed like it was King James, but you, your King, the first verse in the Bible wasn't messed up for you. No. No. So I have a different version. Apparently, the Jesuits, you don't use King James. And mine's all changed. Yeah. And, you know, the plural heavens and the singular heavens. And then yeah. is God plural. God talks a lot about we, we, we. And then he yeah. switches to I. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway, let, let's do the meditation from okay. the third, the first chakra to the third chakra. Or we might go third to first and really ground and root into the earth. Because the energy fields from our third up tend to be extremely heady and... Um, philosophical and metaphysical and it, you know it's great for connecting to the cosmos and to your higher self and to God but there's a whole other part of us that's made of matter from the earth that gets recycled to the earth whether you get buried or cremated the actual atomic structure of your body gets put back into the earth because it's a closed system yeah. nothing escapes right 
Mm-hmm. So it's kind of good sometimes to reground with Earth and let Earth give us that extra energy boost that we might need while all these waves of energy are, are occurring around us and to us. Maybe we need to do more grounding, more earthing, you know, more Earth energy. Totally. All right. Cool. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to see how to do this on my phone. I know, guys, this is all different for me tonight. I prefer having my pc on because then i don't have to hold it the whole night well you can actually um so i'm going to bring you can actually myself. set it down once you start though so if you want you know what i mean i know but it's so far away it's like hi down there it looks really weird unless but i, I mean, had like no. you're not gonna have your camera on though is what i mean it sounds yeah sound, i'll put it down funny. now okay. for sure and um here's the video going off there we go okay, okay so let me just Okay, the air conditioning went off, which is always good because it'll be a little bit quieter, a little less interference. Um, Shane, just pop on and let me know if you can hear me okay if I put the, the phone on my coffee table. Are we good? Yep, I can hear you great. Oh, okay, great, thanks. So we're just going to start as always by getting comfortable in a seated or a laying down position, you know, make yourself move, move around a little and, and get comfortable and take a nice deep breath in and have that be a relaxing, clearing, cleaning breath. And as you exhale out, just let it also draw out any negativity from the day. And breathe in again, a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And as you exhale it out, let it exhale out any stress from your physical body. And we'll take a third deep cleansing breath in and exhale any difficulties, negativity, stress or problems so that you're completely in the now, completely in this moment where it's a peaceful moment and it's a comfortable moment and it's a safe moment. And we're gonna send our grounding cords down now from our root chakra at the base of our spine all the way down to the middle of the earth. And when it reaches the center of the earth, let it kind of go out in all directions like a tree, like the roots of a tree. And now that we're grounded to earth, we're going to breathe in through our hearts and exhale out from our hearts. And as we continue to breathe in through our heart chakra, we're going to let a color come in with it, whatever color you feel comfortable with tonight. Breathe that color in and let it fill up your entire body from the top of your head to the tip of your toes to your fingertips and exhale that color back out. And we're just going to breathe in an easy pace, whatever's comfortable for you in through your heart and exhale out of your heart. And now as we comfortably do our heart breathing, when we exhale that light from God, source, from our higher self, whatever you choose, we're going to let that exhaled light fill a bubble, a protective bubble of light all around our physical bodies. So it's going to go around our head, around our shoulders, completely around our middle, front and back, underneath where we sit, around our legs. And that beautiful bubble of protective healing light goes under your feet and above your head. So now you are sitting completely enveloped in a beautiful healing protective color of light coming from God and source energy through your heart chakra, out of your heart chakra to surround your body. And as we're sitting in this comfortable bubble of light, we're just gonna imagine a really lovely, beautiful event or time in our lives. Something that made us extremely happy and filled our, 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 our minds and our hearts with love and joy. 
And quite often that is a family member that we experienced a birthday or a special event. And sometimes it's a pet that is either in our life now or was in our life. And we're just going to remember that beautiful time that we had with them where we felt so much joy and so much love. That's going to lift your energy now as you're meditating safe and protected and healthy in your bubble of light. And we're going to just focus now on the root chakra, which is often ignored as we do all this metaphysical work with our meditations, always connecting to higher source and expanding our awareness through the exploration of the Mandela effect and its related subjects. That's always working from the heart chakra up. But today we're going to give some love and attention to the lower chakras in our bodies for our whole community. And we're going to do it for our loved ones and our family members, of course, that includes, you know, our loved ones, maybe our neighbors, our colleagues at work, our friends, and for everybody in our community here. And we know each other. We know each other by name and we know each other through heart energy. And we're going to send that out to each other now. And we're going to imagine the color red. And we're going to allow that bubble of light to absorb a beautiful, comfortable, kind of a ruby red, bright and full of light. And we're going to sit in that color and know that the color is a healthy color not only for the root chakra, but for the entire physical body, which is made up of atoms borrowed from Mother Earth just for this lifetime. And that that includes the blood flow and the nerves and the muscle and the sinew that attaches the muscle to the bone and the bones and the teeth and the organ matter that makes up this miraculous body that takes care of itself and you, and you as spirit take care of your body by feeding it well and exercising it well and trying to stay away from the obvious toxins in the environment, the water, the air, or the food. And we're going to just appreciate this ruby red, this electric color that feeds and nourishes the cells and the atoms of our physical body. And we're going to thank Mother Earth for those cells and for that red nourishing color that helps our body to thrive. And when you're comfortable, let the red color go and turn it slowly and gently into orange. And imagine this vibrant orange color in your bubble of light, nourishing and feeding your sacral chakra, which is just about six inches above your root chakra. And it's spinning with a beautiful, vibrant energy of orange. And that is often associated with reproduction of having children or having had children. But if you don't have children, it's also associated with loving and nurturing animals in your life. All the animals that you've ever taken care of or nurtured in your life, that orange energy is extremely important as part of the creative process which is life itself. And also, it nourishes the creativity in the individual person, whether that's through artwork or music or relationships. There's so much creativity going on that's scientific, that's interpersonal, that's through philosophy and your thought processes, your understanding of the world, and your part in it can be extremely creative. And then just working with people, you can work in any environment, doing any job. And if it puts you in touch with people, you can use this orange energy from the 
sacral chakra area to enhance that and to do it creatively, to communicate with other people creatively. And when you're ready, we're just going to let that orange color kind of meld and move into a beautiful bright yellow. And that is actually coming from and nourishing your solar plexus chakra, which is just about in the middle of your body. And all of these colors, this bright yellow of remembering how the sun used to look, that beautiful bright yellow, that's the color of your solar plexus energy. And all of these energies spin at a really comfortable rate and they vibrate and the colors kind of move around and they're very intense and they're very pure, they're very clean and they're really beautiful. And this solar plexus energy, this is your lifeline to being spirit in a human body because it's right in between the lower chakras and the higher chakras. It's kind of the middle ground where the energy comes into your body that then shoots up your spinal cord, feeding and energizing, clearing and cleaning and balancing your higher chakras. And at the same time, it shoots down your spinal cord and it's nourishing and cleaning and clearing and energizing and healing and balancing your lower chakras. And it does this at the same time. And often we don't even realize it, that we're taking in this tremendous energy from the sun and it's electric and it's magnetic and it's other. It's an other kind of energy that we haven't classified yet. And we're drawing that into our solar plexus chakra and we're sending it up our chakras and we're sending it down our chakras and we're nourishing and energizing we're cleaning we're clearing and we're balancing all our chakras through the solar plexus chakra so it does do a lot of extra work and as we've cleared and cleaned our lower chakras today we're just going to thank mother earth nurturing earth for giving us these lower chakra colors in nature and in our food so that we can ground ourselves to earth and feel solid and protected and whole and strong and we can feel grounded and strong protected and whole no matter what work we're doing mentally and emotionally through the higher chakras. And sometimes if we forget to nourish the lower chakras and give our appreciation and our love back to earth, we can get a little flighty and a little lightheaded and a little dizzy, especially with all of these increased energies hitting the surface of the earth, now with the magnetic shield allowing those energies in. So let's always take a few moments every day to take a few deep breaths and imagine the beautiful colors of the yellows and the oranges and the reds to reconnect us to the source of our matter, our material physical bodies, which is earth. And when we do that, let's send earth much love and much gratitude. So let's just sit in that color, yellow, for a few moments. Let's feel clear and clean, energized and refreshed. And let's just thank Mother Earth for the beautiful air, water and foods and nutrients that she gives us so that we can keep our physical bodies healthy and strong. And when you're ready, just start to move around a little bit and breathe normally and in a relaxed manner through your mouth, your nose, 
and take a few deep breaths and let your grounding cord from your root chakra just disappear into the earth where it vanishes. There we go. I'm back. I can't see me though. Where am I? What have I done with my camera? There we go. <laughs> wow, that was nice. I got uh, some wild nostalgic feelings with the colors too. That, that was pretty nice. Did you? With the red and the orange and the yellow? Yeah, especially the orange. I, I didn't really expect that. That was pretty wild. Really? Yeah. I kind of feel that way about the red because we tend to um, avoid red. We don't like red stoplights and red pens. And we think of red as being negative, but it's not. It's very nourishing when you think of the color of your tissues and the organs and your blood when it hits the oxygen. Red is like really vibrant. Yeah, I, I, I really did enjoy the red. I, I think the orange was just the biggest surprise to me out of the nostalgic feelings because the red you know i've always loved red and yellow and orange is i don't know it's just one of those colors that i wouldn't think i had much everybody ignores it everybody yeah. ignores <laughs> orange why it's, is that i don't know it's like if you ask somebody their favorite color it's rarely orange it's always like blue or yellow or green or purple but people tend to skip the orange it's hot it's very ignored it's an ignored color Yet when autumn comes around, it's like you're, you know, it's breathtaking to see all those oranges and reddish oranges and yellowish oranges. But, you know, they're all sort of rooted in that autumn orange color. Yes. Um, yes. I bought this this pillow and um, it's just a pumpkin because I wanted to get orange. Can you see it in my environment? Oh, yeah. I have nothing orange in my world. So I'm like, I need some orange. And I went out and I bought orange pillows. <laughs> because I tend oh and I got an orange puppy here she is there we go we got an orange puppy I don't know if you can see her or not she was uh, so good during the meditation beautiful so yeah I mean th sometimes I think we need to get more of the earthy colors around us just to get our heads out of the clouds because we're so focused on the metaphysical in this group we're always thinking about God souls, reality, you know, so sometimes it's nice to just get back into the earth and ground yourself because you have a physical body, you know? Totally. Yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you. I pre appreciate it. And it was nice to do two weeks of meditations for our community. And then next week we can, you know, start taking requests again and working on the world, the collective, you know? <laughs> Sherry saying, let's just say it, orange is the sexual energy chakra. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, it is because it's the sacral. Yeah. But it's also um creation. When you can't remove sex from creation cuz sex very often winds up in new bodies and new new people, new souls coming into new bodies. So there's this whole creation, this whole creative element. And some people who choose not to have children or can't have children, they channel that energy into their work and they're extremely creative or they channel it into animals and they give the animals around them the same care and love that other people, like we were talking earlier, would give a human child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that nurturing yeah. thing, so that would ex extend to those who decide to maybe uh, donate their time to a children's center or something and sort of get that nurturing mother filled. Yeah, up. or become a nurse, or like Sherry, a she's a nurse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're just constantly nurturing people yeah. around them. Yeah. And that so ties I'm in glad with the divine feminine that we're sort of messing, to, you know, in society. That's why they always say Mother Earth instead of Father Earth. It's always been Father Sun, Mother Moon, Mother Earth, and Father God. So it's like human beings have always been dividing up certain things into either the male or the female, when in reality, Earth is male and female. The sun is male and female. God is, you know what I mean? It's really, 
hard to make all of these important things just one sex. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, totally. Yeah, it's just our our human nature of trying to the battle of the sexes thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Michelle Wolf is saying it. Uh, it was great. She loved it. Oh, hi, Michelle. Thank you. And I'm so glad that you're feeling awesome now. Um, a lot of us were working on you silently and quietly. Once you came on here on the power of eight and you said, hey, guys, send me some healing love. Boy, everybody was doing that in a big way. <laughs> Sylvia says, does the carpet match the drapes? Who, <laughs> me? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. nothing matches. Oh, yeah, I I'm renting. I have this bland carpet. Men matching bland like they're not even drapes i think they're the plastic. word for it is neutral what, <laughs> what do you call those what do you call plastic drapes look uh venetian blinds or vertical blinds plastic vertical blinds of no <laughs> color going in with a carpet of no color <laughs> well you know in an apartment they have to try to sort of make it to where no matter who moves in with whatever furniture they got it's like Yep, the walls of no color. Yeah. Yep. So I'm out going, I need some orange in my life. I just bought them last week because I realized I've got nothing orange around me. I'm like, yeah. I need some orange because I've got blues and purples and pinks, you know. Oh, I would and love that. I used to paint houses for people. And whenever they chose something really colorful, like they're like, we want this one wall, an accent wall. And they'd go like with the winter green or, you know, and it would take a lot of paint and a lot of coats to really cover it. But man, I yep. loved all the color. If they go with the really. I bet you did because you're an artist. Oh yeah. yeah. It was harder to cut it in and everything, but it was so much better than, you know, antique white, which is like what everybody wanted white or antique white or yep. beige or something that was sort of neutral, you know? Yep, I agree. But then if you get stuck in a neutral place, you can just fill it up with colors, with candles and pillows and rocks and artwork, you yeah, know? Totally. Plants and stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even fake ones. See, that yeah. was from my mom. So it has sentimental value to me and I don't have to water it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the fake palm trees on each side of the couch and stuff. You know? Yeah, I got one. See, doesn't that look real? Oh, I love Maybe it. not. The Maybe shows. not. The shadows are cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. mind the apartment life. It's, you know, I, I do like being able to walk around in a backyard too, but you know. Yeah, I'm like, mm, let's see. Good. I had a house in England and then I moved us here. And then finances right now make apartment living easier for me. But then I realized you pay more to stay in an apartment than you do if you get a mortgage. A mortgage is lower, but it's it's a 30 year commitment, you know, or 20 year or whatever. So and there's no maintenance I'm like, mm -hmm. man. There's, yeah, I'm having it on. There's no, uh, you know, land, you got your own landscapers. You got your own maintenance crew that you can call up if something breaks. Oh, yeah. Garbage so. disposal goes out. And I'm like, hello, somebody <laughs> fix my garbage disposal. You're like, oh, my gosh, I got to call the office. What a drag. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I had a, a house, I was like, oh, my God, I got to fix this now. Oh, my God. Or my husband, he could fix anything. But yeah. when he passed, it was like it fell to me. And I just can't fix anything or I didn't think I could. I was brainwashed, you know, into being a good girl. Good right. girls don't fix things, right? So, right. but uh, yeah, I can't complain because I have a balcony over a lake with a fountain and ducks and turtles and fish. So Let's I'm like happy. UFOs flying by. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I look every <laughs> Saturday now, and I'm like, no, no. I'm like, if it comes back, I'll call it a Saturday special, a Saturday <laughs> banner. <laughs> awesome. It's not coming back, so that's good. You know, it's like, oh, then it's more credible because it didn't come right. back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, well, I think we broke a record tonight, Shane. It's like 1022. This is our longest ever power of eight. <laughs> power of eight at 10. Huh? <laughs> yeah, this is the longest ever. All those technical difficulties, that was crazy. And next week, the people who have this amazing company called Metaforms, yeah. where they make like sacred geometry. Oh, yeah. See? That's going to be Woo! fun having them on. That's the uh, people you met in uh, the co they have their own store in uh, Colorado Springs, right? Yeah, uh, it's Lions, Colorado, which um, is close to Boulder. So oh, okay. this is a chakra cleansing tool. So today, I did my meditation through the chakra cleansing tool because I don't always, uh, but it's a new thing that I got anyway, um, because we were clearing and cleaning. 
yeah, our I lower like the golden chakras. ratio and all the ge geometric yeah so you got the circle one. you got the star you've got the square you've got the rectangle you got the golden ratio you got five pi pi not phi phi and pi i think the golden ratio is phi oh yeah. yeah, you're right. There's Phi and Pi. Yeah. So anyway, that's a chakra clearing tool. So I thought, well, we're clearing the lower chakra. So I'll see if it helped. I don't know. I don't know if it helped or not. We'll see. We'll see how fresh and um, energetic we feel yeah. tomorrow morning when we wake up. Worth a try, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So that'll be fun. So that's next week next will be Saturday? fun. Oh, okay. Yeah, next Saturday. Um, we just have to get on early so that they can get on because they've never done, they've got their own website and their own YouTube channel, but they're not always joining people live. So okay. if we go on a little early, we can help them get on to hang out. Oh, another option for you as well. Just I'll mention it now on the air. So if anybody else runs across that is some cell phone plans have a hotspot and you can just connect to your cell phone's oh. internet through your computer, just connect it up to the Wi-Fi. I don't know if you have a direct line going to your computer or if it's on the Wi-Fi, but I don't know. I don't. <laughs> that's technical. That's complicated. Um, I do know it worked really well on this phone tonight, but I don't like holding it. I don't like holding the radiation and the energy for a right. long time. I like the laptop because that transmutes the energy and it's not so yeah. hot. But yeah, it's you could so you powerful. could set up the. Uh, that way it would be it would be your computer but it would be using the connection you were using for the second half of the show so you just oh. turn on the hot spot if you have sprint you probably have it and then it will be going through your phone's internet rather than your home's wi-fi internet you can look into uh, it i guess in the meantime yeah right <laughs> i need like a technician here to do that <laughs> no it's seriously not, it's, it's not hard to do at all you just add a password i can show you how to do it or send you a link that Okay, so if you can teach me how to get my Sprint hotspot yeah. to grab my computer laptop and put us on a, a, a reliable stream, because the Wi-Fi is just not reliable enough. Yeah, but your Sprint connection seems pretty good. So. Yeah, and this Sprint connection jumped over to Wi-Fi. It says it's on Wi-Fi now, so go yeah. figure, you know. Yeah, it still looks good, though. And if it drops, I bet it just, just automatically hops back to the Sprint Tower. It does. It does. So right now it's on Wi-Fi, and it's steady, and it's stable. Um, could it be something in my computer that does not pick up Wi-Fi in a stable way? A cheap old computer, like, might not have the mechanisms to pick up Wi-Fi? Well, there you'd be able to rule it out. If it works great off of your phone's Wi-Fi, then you'll know. You know All right. So next week, I'm going to take my daughter's new computer, and I'm going to join you guys, because there's going to be four of us, right, on Hangouts. Yeah. We'll see how that does. We'll it see just if got we're blurry. Are you still helped. on your Wi-Fi, home Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay, still on now, home Wi-Fi. I can tell by it getting blurry that it probably, the bandwidth dropped, so it might hop back to the Sprint Tower. There it went. Did it jump to the Sprint oh Tower? Oh, my gosh. This is, no, I guess. Who knows? I don't know. This is so far beyond me. Oh, does it say LTE next to the bars of your connection on your phone? Yes. Yep, it just switched back to the Sprint Tower and it got clear again. See? Holy moly. Uh, Holy moly. I pay attention to that kind of silly stuff that you wouldn't, you know, you'd think I'm a psychic or something, but now I just pay attention to these. No, you're just things. a really smart guy <laughs> and a psychic. You've got both <laughs> things going for you. I'm like really intuitive and very psychic, but put me in the physical world and I'm like, how does this work? Oh, what are you yeah. talking about? You know? Yeah, I was totally picturing the whole thing going down there and the, just the, I don't know, I just picture things. I'm a visual person. Helps with the Yeah, but also very practical. Very, yeah. very practical. So if you can help me get my, my hotspot over to my daughter's computer next week, might be great. We'll see. Awesome. All right. Well, lots of love and light to everybody in the chat. Thanks for sticking love around. Love you guys. Mwah, 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 you. Mwah. Thanks for hanging in there with all our technical problems tonight. Yeah, definitely. And if you're watching this later... Don't pay attention to that. We've probably cut it out. I'm going to see. If yeah, I'm we're going to cut out. it out. So it'll be a mystery to you. You won't get to experience any of that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Time machine. Retro causality. So, yes. Anyway. Um, spliced. Edited retro causality. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace. See you guys. Bye. Love you. If you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash UOTF. Thanks.
Thank you.